Hi, my name's Topher Campbell. I'm the artistic director of a company called The Red Room, which is a theatre and film company, and I'm chatting to Run Riot. The Red Room Theatre and Film Company is a, is a, is a unique experiment, I think, in what, uh, what, what it takes to make and how to make political theatre and political storytelling. And basically, what we, the company's been going for since 1996. I became the Artistic Director in 2007. And we've been doing work which focuses on human rights and social justice issues in the UK. And we're London-based, so a lot of our work has been in London. Lost Nation, which is part of the Poverty Project, is part of a, a big project that we've been doing at the Red Room for the last year or so. Um, we decided that we'd focus on trying to represent people who were not being heard in the debates around welfare cuts and around wealth inequality. And what we decided to do was to interview people, to see what people's views were, and find a way of bringing those stories that we hear onto stage. So the Poverty Project itself is looking to the whole idea of poverty, so we did, we've done platforms on uh, youth unemployment, on social exclusion, on disability and so on and so forth. But now we're concentrating on making a production, and that production is Lost Nation. And that involves some very exciting things. It involves a site-specific performance, and it also involves a world premiere of a documentary, and it's happening in London, it's in Brent, and it really kind of raises lots of questions about the kind of society we live in and why we live here, and asks, well, you know, because the sort of things that we're listening to happen to us, and why is it happening to other people, and what is the story really behind the news and the rhetoric about uh, benefits scroungers and, and people who are claiming benefits, whether they're in work or out of work. The reason that Lost Nation is part documentary and part performance is because the Red Room has a saying which is challenging the status quo and what we tend to do is we tend to challenge the status quo in terms of not only the content but also the form. So we like to do work which is also asking questions about performance, about public space, about theatre, about film and who owns spaces and where things can happen. So we're very interested in mixing up things in the way that we do it as well as what we do and what we say. So hopefully we're making an exciting contribution to the theatrical and, and film landscape of, of, of London as well as the way in which we're entering into the debate, as well as the way in which we're entering into the debates about um, welfare and uh, benefits. I think with our audiences we just like to surprise and entertain really at the end of the day. I think, you know, we're entertainers. I think that's something even even though we kind of think of ourselves as a political theatre company, I mean, at the end of the day, it's about good storytelling and having an interesting and informative night out, as well as being challenged and entertained. And I'm hoping that people come, there's a bit of mystery involved. We don't, we're not telling people where the, where the things take place until very late into them buying a ticket. We're not, telling them, we're not giving much information until you're there on the day. So it's really about coming to experience something very different um, and, and also hopefully then be, take away some kind of uh, idea of how you might want to think about um, you know, continuing the debate or the conversation online because we do a lot of work online. So we say to people, follow us on, on Twitter, follow us on Facebook, check out our email um, emails uh, from our website, so join our email list, and get involved with the conversation around the project because the conversation around the project is interesting as the project itself. Well, Lost Nation, which is part of the Poverty Project, Lost Nation, the next production by the Red Room Theatre and Film Company, was based in Brent because um, I personally know nothing about West London. I've lived in East London, South London, and I live in North London. Um, and I thought, what's happening in this huge borough? It's a mystery to me. Um, and also, when last year you think about London, you think about East London and the Olympics and all this huge kind of thing, and also the whole of London, really, in many ways. Um, and you think about the sexy boroughs, or whatever, the, public, the ones that get a lot of publicity are in the south, like Southwark and Lambeth, where Brixton is, and you know, and everywhere. So I thought, wow, this is going from Kilburn, which is right down uh, the south, all the way up to Kingsbury, past Wembley, Halsden, um, Wilsdon, and you know, and, and I thought this is a really interesting borough. It also has some of the, like somewhere like Newham, it has huge amount of languages, over 400 languages are spoken in, in, um, in Brent. It has a great big gap between rich and poor. You have the very wealthy southern part 
and then you have a very poor middle part and you have a wealthier northern part. And you also have a tremendous racial mix. You have Irish, you have black, you have Pakistani, you have Muslim, you have Christian, um, you, and, it's an, and really kind of, so in a way, it's, it's, a, it's a mini London in London. It's a mini UK in London. So I thought, well, what's, what best place to represent stories of people who are being, uh, going through financial hardship as representatives of the whole of the UK than Brent. And uh, it's also been a great learning experience for the company as well.